Well, you are in Singapore selling painting actually, but obviously there is a storm around you. What do you want to say? What is actually your version of the facts? Well, at first it's wonderful to be in Singapore and I think it's a great reflection of exactly who I am. I think there's a big mis misinterpretation about our family and I have an art gallery and I travel to six to eight art fairs around the world every year. A lot of them are in countries that are dollar based. Here for example we would invoice our clients in dollars in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, in Hong Kong, in Miami. So we as a family are a multicultural, ethnically diverse family which we're very proud of. And then I would say that this is a tragic event for my husband and as I read the papers, as it's really gone viral, as I left the airport uh, last night, on 15 newspapers my husband was on the cover. And yes, he's very good looking, that's clear, but what's more important is that people are trading the, turning this into an insider trading kind of scandalous event. So I'd like to cover the following points. The first point is, if you are going to do something like this, A, you don't contact compliance. If you're going to do something like this, B, have a numbered account. Don't have the account in your name. C, if you're going to do something like this, don't do it three and a half weeks before the event. We all know the world is very volatile right now. So is the foreign exchange market. D, if you're going to do something like this, why, don't, why not trade the targeted currency? It's Euro-Swiss. In fact, I'd love to see a chart of the correlation between Euro-Swiss and Dollar-Swiss. And then E, the thing that has been misreported more than anything else is the whole idea behind the transaction. We sold a chalet in Launen. In order to get the liquidity in the account to a 50-50% level, dollars were purchased just as a conservative idea for this portfolio. That was my idea. That was his portfolio. That obviously was my mistake. When we transacted on our next little apartment that we bought, we then realized that those proceeds, or I felt those proceeds should continue to be neutral. 50% dollars, 50% Swiss. And so there was a dollar sale. This wasn't a day trade, this wasn't a month trade, there was a reason behind this trade. And if you're a central banker and you work as hard as my husband was working, think about what you want your private portfolio to reflect. Go home, buy $50 worth of Swiss francs, buy $50 worth of dollars, see what kind of a P&L you generate, and let me know if it distracts you from doing your job. And those are the points I'd like to make. And I stand by this, that that was my trade. And frankly, in the month of August, if anyone remembers, Switzerland was sitting with a $21 billion Swiss franc deficit. The far right was making the headlines. There was pressure on my husband to lose his job. And the last thing that man was thinking about was his private portfolio. And God bless all of you for reporting all of this and not taking one line out. And then I will find that integrity has come back to journalism. Thank you so much. Do you think, do you think your, your husband is a victim of uh, politically motivated, I mean, his blocker revenge, his blocker, you know, going in this mission? I am not allowed to comment on that, but one person did make a very interesting comment. Mr. Blocker might have a lot of money behind him, but we have God. How do you feel about your husband's resignation? It was inevitable? You know, I guess at the end of the day, the reflection is there was an error of judgment. He should never have let me do that transaction, and upon reflection, that transaction should have been reversed. Had I known the, the maelstrom that I would have caused for this country, you know, I really, from the bottom of my heart, apologize to the Swiss people, to the politicians who've been distracted from what's important, and more importantly, I apologize to my husband, because he's a great man, he's done a great job, he represents Switzerland uh, at the G20, he would have had that opportunity as vice chairman of the FSB, He's a member of the G30, the most prominent academic intellectual institution probably in the world. And what breaks my heart is that his credibility is now being stained. And I think, I won't say what the motivations are, but clearly the journalists have another wonderful story to follow once they get sick of us. Well, exactly. He said he cannot prove what was wrong or what was right. Do you think actually at some point he will be able? I don't know, but as my husband said to the press, my word is my bond, my word is my bond.
but I really thank you for this opportunity.